I'm with Sahail Debays from the John Paul II Foundation in Bethlehem. Now, Sahail, what is the John Paul II Foundation? John Paul II uh, Foundation here in Bethlehem is the headquarters for the John Paul II Foundation, mainly uh, main quarters in Italy. It's the its main branch in the Middle East is in Bethlehem. Now, John Paul, as I said, is uh, originally from Italy, is a Catholic a foundation that deals with uh, investment in human being, helping human being on all levels. We have, as John Paul, many projects in everywhere, in many places in the Middle East. We have they have built school in the north, and in Lebanon, in Iraq, in Baghdad, I think a social institution center in Iraq. Here we are in Bethlehem, the baby hospital f- for surgery is going on with the. Bethlehem Association for Rehabilitation in Bejala. They did so many projects here uh, on the level of empowering also. We have the three factories, let me say, for training youth on main uh, work like uh, where olive wood work, mother of pearl, m- many other ceramics in Bethlehem, in centers in Bethlehem as a vocational center. So on other hand, this is the work of the John Paul II Foundation. But actually the work of John Paul II Foundation here in Bethlehem, the headquarters here, we do so many things. We are dealing with beginning from children up to the youth. For children, we have projects like Children Without Borders that keep offer the opportunity for children to play football in particular. We have more than 1,500 children playing football all over Palestine with this project. Now, this project is becoming an independent institution as well. Association. We also have the Italian language center here in the, in the association, in, in the foundation in Bethlehem, the Italian language center where we uh, teach Italian language with the Perugia University and giving certificates from Perugia University that enable the graduates to study in Italy. Instead of going to in Italy to study one year language in Perugia, they study it here mm. with, certifi- with accreditation. So this is another opportunity we are giving to youth. And as I said, that's our part for children. We are also, during the year, we offer so many activities for children, extracurricular activities for children that schools cannot offer. We are offering here in John Paul II music, uh, so many things, different things. It depends on the demand mm. of the children in the school. So this is a summary of John Paul II Foundation in Bethlehem. Mm. When was the organization started here in Bethlehem? In Bethlehem, 2009. And what is the mission purpose here? The mission purpose here is to help the Christian community on all levels, mm. offering them the opportunity, opening new aspects for the children, for the Christian community in Palestine and in the Middle East as well. Mm. But not only the Christians. Any project that helps the community, they are John Paul II is dealing with. Mainly it's for Christians, mainly. Is life here in Bethlehem very difficult for the Christian community? You know, in the Middle East, in the East, in the Middle East, nowadays, life for Christians and for Muslims as well. Life is getting difficult for everyone. However, for Christians, we are always, we look at ourselves as victims, unfortunately, which is not good, which is not right. Mm. Of course, we are getting less and less by numbers. We are getting, uh, opportunities are getting less for us, of course. Because if we look at the percentage, it's normal. But it's not, for me in part, I think that it's not a matter of percentage, it's not a matter of number, it's a matter of quality. It's a matter of what we offer, what we can offer to our society. And on the other hand, we see ourselves as one of the main pillars of the society. Our existence here is very important for the society, for the future, for the stability as well, Mm. as Christians. On the other hand, we as Christians have so many institutions in the area. I'm talking about Bethlehem, even in Palestine in general. On the level of, of education, all I am a school principal as well. Here I am volunteering in John Paul II, but I am a school principal on my work, my job. So the 99% of the private schools in Palestine are Christian schools, mm-hmm. and not non-profit schools, by the way. On the level of education, this is these are the schools as well as the universities. We have the uh, Bethlehem University, we have the American University in Madaba in Jordan. So on the level of education, we have our share. And this is one of, we are sharing in a big portion in the Palestine, the society. Now on the level of health, we have hospitals as well. On the level of housing, the Christian community in general, I'm talking about the patriarchates, the the churches, 
are offering apartments and are building apartments for youth, for new married couples, etc. So I think the Christian society here actually is doing the, the job of the government. Mm. Really, it's going the job. On the other hand, we see our Christian existence very well recognized and accredited on the official level. We have ministers, we, have, we are very well represented in the local authorities. So, as I said, it's not a matter of... Although it is important, the number, the percentage, but it's not a matter of percentage, it's not a matter of numbers, it's a matter of what we are offering to our society. And on the other hand, how our society is looking to us as Christians. We are facing problems, of course we are facing problem, problems, unlike problems in other, in other countries or uh, around us, which is clear, mm. unlike that for many reasons. But still we are facing problems, yes, but on the other hand we are doing our job, we are living our life. What we are facing actually is what the others are facing on the ground, siege, you know, all these things, economical difficulties out of the political situation, as you know. We are facing what the others are facing. I refuse to look to myself or to look to my existence here as something special. I am a citizen, I am Palestinian, I am Arab, Palestinian, Christian living here, so I live like the others. What the others face, I face. What the others get, I get. On the other hand, I look to myself that as a person who can offer more than the others, so I will offer more to than the others. This is the right. Now you were doing a lot of work with children and youth. Is it important to work with children and youth, particularly while they're still young? Yes, of course. If you are looking at the future, the future begins with the children. And then it continues with the youth. It ends up with the elder people. Why we are dealing with the children, out of our point of view, the educational point of view, and out of our point of view for a better future. Our main slogan in, in Children Without Water, not John Paul II Foundation, and John Paul II founder is live to empower. But in Children Without Border, we shape the future. Our slogan is that we shape the future. Mm. So how do we shape the future? The future is embedded in those children. Whatever we plant, as we say in agriculture, in those children, we will, it will be harvest in the, for our harvest for the future, mm. for those, with those children. So we invest in the children for a better future. We invest in the children. What we do with the children is that all our activities, all our practices, all our projects for the children. With the football, as I said, we plant the teamwork spirit. With football, through football, we help our children to see that there are others living with them, but they have to live together. They have to play together. They have to stay. They are actually, they are the same. On the other hand, for the other part, I'm talking about Christian, Muslims, or the parts of our uh, society. Through football, as I said, we plant good, the ideals we need for the future, for a better a future. That's why we are dealing with children. Now, with youth, we continue to deal with youth in order to help them to open new aspects uh, in life for them. Aspects here in Palestine, unfortunately, is they are very close. And they are getting very, they are getting less. Out of the situation, you see, out of the occupation, etc., so what we are trying to do, he, I'll give you an example. Here you have to finish school until the 12th grade. Scientific stream, vocational stream, literal stream, etc., etc. Now, after that, what, you, what can you do? What you can do is that going to the university. Otherwise, you go to work as a worker in Israel or anywhere else. What we are actually doing is that giving them another opportunity to train them, like, for example, to work in Hollywood to work in Mother of Pearl, which are the main, the traditional work of Bethlehem. Or, okay, Mother of Pearl, Hollywood, as I said, and ceramics. We are giving them another opportunity with languages, like the Italian language. Mm -hmm. Uh, We are now planning to do, actually have finished, of having our own vocational center through which we can offer our graduate a diploma accredited by the Ministry of Labor to, to open new aspects for the youth, because Youth without hope is actually, as we say, a, a bomb. I don't know how to say it. It's actually a project for not for bad future, let me mm. say. So that's why we are dealing also with, with youth mm. for a better future. Mm. Is there a lot of hopelessness on the streets of Bethlehem, but when they come here, you're actually seeing a sense of more hope? No, hope... Hope is something. It's something. It's something very difficult to to see. 
first of all, hope is something very difficult to define. Mm. What kind of hope? So if I look in the, if you are talking about Christians, you are talking about Christians. If I look in the eyes of the Christians, unfortunately, I don't see hope. Mm. But when I sit with them, when I look at the, the results on the ground, I see hope. Mm. So the hope, hope is a matter of definition. What do you define hope? What the people, hope here, unfortunately, we are doing a good work. If you talk to someone, frankly, you will see hope in his. But if you complain with him, if you begin complaining, he will continue to complain with you. So hope is something, very, but generally speaking, generally speaking, I am not very optimistic, mm. generally speaking, about the situation of Generally speaking, I'm not very optimistic, and I'm hope is not, is getting less in the hearts of the people in general. I'm not talking about Christians. Out of what we see around us, is getting less and less, unfortunately. But what we are trying to do is we are trying to raise hope another time. But along as what we can do, we are not the state. We are not. We cannot design political, you know, political agreements or etc. But what we are trying to do is to raise hope one more time in the hearts of the people through our projects, through our approach, through our concept, through our uh, work, through mm. whatever we can do for them. Uh, does your work with children and youth keep them off the streets and out of violence? Yeah. So you're actually bringing peace to the Holy Land? Yes, of course. You know, talking about Children Without Borders project, which is now an association, independent association, with the vision of Children Without Borders project was to keep children out of the streets, to keep them in the right place, to give them the opportunity to, to practice the thing they love, they like, to give them the opportunity to spend their free time in a very good way, because free time without anything to do, you know, it's an in education disaster for the children. So yes, of course, we are building peace to children without borders, keeping children out of the streets, keeping children giving them the opportunity to do something constructive through their free time. We are helping the society. We are helping the parents. Parents now are facing problems in raising up their children with all the technology, with all they do not know what to do with them. So we are actually offering them the opportunity. We are, all the, we are helping the society. We are helping the state as well. Mm -hmm. This is the work of the state. Mm -hmm. They have to keep to offer children opportunities because leaving them in the streets it, does, it doesn't help to build a better future or a good future. Yes, so yes, of course, one of our main aims in Children Without Border is building peace. We are building peace through gi uh, giving children this opportunity. Is the Christian message important here for the foundation? Yes, yes, of course. The, our Christian message is embedded in all our projects, in our targets, in our aims. In our vision, yes, it is the Christian message is in the core of the work of the John Paul II Foundation and all its projects, like Children Without Borders and all other, uh, the vocational center, etc. All of, yes, it is the, the Christian message that is moving us here. And uh, it's not only moving us, it's the Christian message that encourages us to continue our work. Out of this, without this message, without this mission, let me say, it will be something for only to gain profit, and we are not getting gaining any profit <laughs> out of this work. As I told you, we are, for, we are volunteering uh, here. Mm. Yeah, you, you've said you're a volunteer. Why do you do what you do? Because I know that this thing it will help us, will help in the future. I am looking for a better future. I am as an edu educationist. I am school principal for 24 years. I see that the the future is very important, and education is very important. What I cannot do through the school, through the traditional system of the school, I can do through John Paul II Foundation and its, its projects. Why I'm doing that, I, why I'm volunteering that, because it's out of my Christian mission. I think that I always remember the words of the late patriarch, Michel Sabah, who said that God wanted us to be Christians, but he wanted us to be Christians here, not Christians in, Los, in L.A. or in California or, mm -hmm. or in Paris or in London. It's God will, it's God wish, it's God uh, will that we are Christians here. So we have to think what we should do as Christians here. Mm. Otherwise, God could have created us in, in other places, in, in another place in the world. So this is part of my mission. That's why we are volunteering. Not myself, so many youth, so many friends are also volunteering in this work out of their Christian message. And because they believe that what 
this foundation is doing, the projects of this foundation are very important for the future of my children, for the other children, and also for the future peace, for the peace now and for the future peace. Otherwise, otherwise I think we, uh, the situation will be, unfortunately, just like the neighbor countries faced mm-hmm. in the couple of uh, years ago. Unfortunately, without these initiatives, I think we would have faced the same situation that the others faced. Mm. What's your prayer, finally, for the future here, the John Paul II Foundation? I wish, I dream as well, that we will be able to reach every corner in Palestine with our project. I wish and pray that we will be able to touch every single person, every single Palestinian, every single person, whether he is in Christian or Muslim, even if we have Jews who are living in the West Bank, we don't, I don't, to touch everyone who is living on the Holy Land, on Palestine, with our projects, with the embedded message of our, which is the Christian message, with our projects, so that he can feel, he can remember these things in his future, and he can plant these messages in his children mind and the life of his children imagine if we can we will be able to do that i think we will be doing a lot of very important thing for a better future mm. for the the christian life in palestine okay so how thank you very much thank you thank you very much